Hi, welcome to Beneath the Skin, the podcast about everything told through the history of tattooing. I'm your host, Dr. Matt Lodder. Um, today, Thomas is moving house, um, so he can't record. He's given me uh, the mic on my own again to do a solo episode. Um, I had a huge list of things that I, I could have done, and um, a lot of them intersect, I think, a bit closely with things that I've already talked about recently. I mean, things that are on my mind, but um, and there are some things that I wanted to uh, that I think would probably work better in conversation with Tom. You know, talking about some some particular issues and things. So um, I want to kind of do instead of a real kind of uh, deep dive of history, I suppose I want to talk uh, about. A tattoo artist who was really important to me um, when I was first getting excited about tattooing as a teenager, and he's he's a guy that's connected in with um, with Ed Hardy. He worked for Ed Hardy, as we'll talk about in a second. Um, so there is that kind of thread there. He's a guy who has been, I think, you know, become really mythologized. Not only because even when he was still working. He was like roundly hailed as like one of the greatest tattoo artists working at the time, but also particularly because um, he retired from tattooing and is generally a kind of pretty reserved and um, introverted guy and doesn't um, talk much uh, about his work. So he's become this kind of mythologized figure, basically. And I'm sure a lot of members of a lot of listeners to the podcast so will have heard of this guy but some of you might not have done and i kind of encourage you to go and um after this episode go and check out his work both his tattooing also his music in particular and his and his poetry and writing um the guy uh, i want to talk about today if some of you might have guessed even from that introduction <laughs> is um is dan higgs daniel higgs um dan higgs was you know, when I start, I've told this sort of uh, this story in, in in broad strokes before. When I I got excited about tattooing when I was very young, um, for all the reasons you've heard me talk about before. But when I really started, you know, I was sort of hurtling into my teens, and the op- the opportunity to actually get tattooed was beginning to present itself. I would um, even you know, when I was sort of fifteen, sixteen, every time I'd go into London. I'd pop into Tower Records, and in Tower Records, they'd have like import punk CDs, import punk records, and also tattoo magazines and tattoo books. And it must have been, I guess, like the sort of mid to late nineties, like maybe like before I went away to uni, like ninety six, maybe ninety seven, when you know some friends of mine were starting to get tattooed. Um, they'd been you know underage, pop down the tattoo shop around the corner from where my school was in Chelmsford. And they were coming home with little bits and pieces of, you know, flash off the wall or whatever. And the stuff that they were getting looked nothing like the stuff I started seeing in these magazines. Um, and I think more than anyone, the work of Dan Higgs is like burned into my brain as like, holy shit, that is like everything I you know thought tattooing could possibly be and more, right? Um, and I didn't know uh, much about him. In fact, I'm, I'm thinking like, so I think my first encounter with Higgs's work must have been in um, Tattoo Time number five, which is uh, the Art from the Heart episode, um, issue. It was published in 1991, but there's no way I, I, I bought it in 91. I must have bought it, as I said, probably in like 95 or 96. Um, and in that uh in that book, there is, um, uh, I mean, some just incredible, like so many images in that, just that one episode have burned into my brain. There's images of Bob Shaw. There's like absolutely iconic images of Bob Shaw getting tattooed um, uh, in the 1940s. There's an incredible um, uh, interview with Mike Malone, an article about Tom DeVita. And... There's also um, an article which is called Weirdo Art and American Classics. And that's written by Ed. And uh, it's Ed kind of talking about, and I I, I cite this article in my, or this this chapter in my academic article that I was chatting to to Ed Hardy about, if you listen to that um, uh, interview that I did with Ed uh, about a decade ago. I was talking to him about this academic article that I'd just written. 
called New Old Style, where I was thinking about the relationship between you know tradition and novelty in tattooing, particularly in kind of quite unquote traditional tattoo art. And really, I guess this article from Art from the Heart, um, from Tattoo to Tone Number Five, Weirdo Art and the Rebirth of Bold American Classics, is basically about that same question, right? Like it's about the return of what would go on to be called old school or American traditional, um, but about how it had returned and been remixed into something like newer and weirder and cooler. Ed talks and includes images of work by Dave Lum, another like, incredible guy whose images, if anyone, another one of these books that a lot of us got when we were younger, before we even were able to get tattooed, the um, the, uh, the the Thousand Tattoos book, the Hank Schiffmacher book, there's some amazing pictures in there of Dave Lum's work. Um, just the wildest, like filthiest, hilarious stuff. Um, uh, and he includes in that, um, you know, in that article, pictures of work by Dave Gibson, uh, by Jill Jordan, who worked for Bob Roberts, uh, by Eddie Deutsch and uh, and Brad Fink. All of these basic artists who stand for me as like the first moment I got super excited by tattooing um, and really blown away by what it was capable of. And in in amongst that is a series of sheets um, of, of, of flash and uh, tattoos, photographs of work done by by Dan Higgs, which sort of straddle this really interesting moment between, yeah, American traditional and I guess what we would go on to call new school. Um, and Ed, you know, Ed muses on on this moment. I think in the early nineties, uh, that, that I suppose if anyone is now looking back on it, what the truth it told sort of became almost a self fulfilling prophecy. But this is what Ed had to say. So, in the past two or three years, a tattoo style has been emerging that at best revives the powerful look and basic themes of classic twentieth century tattooing, but with a new warp. Borrowing from the monster or weirdo art first developed in the mid-50s by Southern California custom car painters Von Dutch, Dean Kid Jeff Jeffries, and Ed Big Daddy Roth, this new old tattooing revels in strong design statements with grotesque and humorous themes. Um, he also talks about the influence of Zap Comics and, and Robert Williams in particular. Um, Robert Williams, another, again, uh, I've mentioned that a big influ- influence for me with tattooing was seeing guns well not seeing but you know seeing pictures of guns and roses and older kids in my street walking around with guns and roses t-shirts on and the cover of um, appetite for destruction is painted by robert williams all these kind of strands join up right all these i didn't realize at the time but they were all converging around this particular kind of um graphic moment uh hardy in his usual kind of eloquent style also links this stuff back to you know hieronymus bosch bruegel goya and he also talks about art from China, J- Japan, and Tibet. Um, a new generation of tattooers, he said, most not even born when hot rod art and underground comics first surfaced, are embracing the old styles with a vengeance. For them and their customers, the look is timeless and what tattooing is all about. Rejecting the excessive detail and avalanche of technical glitter that guts, gluts contemporary tattooing, they're breaking out with heart, heat, raw power, and soul. It's bringing it all back home with tattoos that look like Sailor Jerry on acid. Right. And I think this style, and as I said, I encountered it probably a few years later than that was written. Not not that long afterwards, but maybe five or six years later. Um, also through the prism of it being possibly foreign and possibly exotic in being from Southern California, this place where, you know, all the bands and films and uh, you know, art that I loved was from as well. And yeah, like m- my, you know, I, I tell the story of, of, of my, of my grandparents, uh, and the sort of family law about tattooing, but I guess my love of tattooing as a culture, as an art form, as a, as a thing really is. Yeah. And like, it's, it's filtered through this moment in time and particularly through, again, in hindsight, I realize Ed Hardy's shop, uh, tattoo city in, um, California, in San Francisco. And we talked to Doug a bit about that as well. Um, when we interviewed Doug Higgs, as I said, stands out artistically because I think his stuff is probably in some senses closer to more, a more kind of you know, proximate version of, of, of that traditional language of tattooing, but also because he has this just, I don't know, it's hard to describe it without, maybe I'll talk about some specific details, but 
it's the kind of images that when you see it, particularly some of the things of his that have become real classic little icons from his, his flash sheets, you can never unsee them. They're the kind of things you literally think of when you're dreaming, or at least I do. I close my eyes at night and I see uh, I see Higgs's like you know mummy, for example, little flash banger. So yeah, if you haven't heard of of Daniel Higgs, like uh, Dan Higgs, Daniel Higgs, as he goes, he was sort of known as Dan Higgs for for a long time as a tattooer, but I think he more more usually goes by Daniel Higgs now. Um, you absolutely need to to check him out. Um, he, he there's a lovely quote from Ed actually, um, where uh, in um, in Ed's uh, autobiography, uh, in your dreams, my life in tattoos book, where he talks about meeting Dan for the first time. And I think it, again, it gives you a good sense uh, of of Dan uh, Daniel Higgs as as, a, as, a, as an artist. And also, I probably again, if you if you know me in real life or you've been listening to this podcast for long enough, maybe you can see why I uh, why I like him and was drawn to him. Um, although again, as I said, I didn't know anything about this him at the time. Uh, so this is Ed. It was Freddie uh, Freddie Corbin who introduced me to Daniel Higgs, a real live wire artist, writer, and musician from Baltimore, who had a powerful and highly unusual style. Bill and Freddie thought highly of Higgs, and they told me I should hire him. Higgs was working at another shop in town and had come for a tattoo at the condo at the Hamilton, so I knew him solely as a customer. When we met to talk about it, I asked Higgs to show me his poetry. I figured a person's poetry would be a good indicator of what kind of person he was. Not enough of that, I don't think, in tattoo apprenticeships these days. (laughs) People running shops and saying, hey, if you want to work here, show me your poetry. But like, tattooing would be better off uh, if more people did that, I think. His poetry, said Ed, was highly whacked out and very original. He was interested in a lot of thought systems, obsessed with the roots of Christianity, especially Gnostic and other esoteric pursuits. He was kind of tormented by larger questions of the meaning meaning of life, which I liked. I prefer my tattooers to have a little something more going on than what time does the bar open. Um, You know, like, I agree with that too. I think, again, I, I knew nothing about, about Dan Higgs initially other than seeing his freaking amazing images um but coming to coming to know uh more about him i I think i can understand why i was so drawn to him and and what i found so compelling in his imagery um if you're interested in dan's poetry um he's published a couple of books um one of which is astonishingly impossible to get hold of which is called doomsday bonnet um and the other which was more recently reissued and it's a bit easy to get hold of i've actually got a first edition of it of this book it's called the Book of Antenna, um, or oh, Antennae. I, I can't find it. I was going to hopefully read out some of the poetry today, and I I can't find it on my bookshelf anywhere. Um, but he has published poetry. But he's also uh, the this kind of absolute iconic figure in post hardcore like underground punk music. Um, his band, uh, uh, the big band he was part of, Lungfish were like one of the longest serving bands on um on discord records they were kind of like you know very close with ian mckay uh, from minor threat he was a singer of a band called reptile house um and has gone on to do a lot of solo work too i have to be really honest and i was never cool enough to be into dan higgs the musician um I when I went to uni, I met one of my best friends uh, now best friends kevin who's also a big tattoo guy and he He's an absolute incredible like music nerd, and and he knew Higgs more initially as an art, as a, as a musician, as the singer of Lungfish, um, than as a tattoo artist. I, 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 I my I have quite bad taste in music. Really, I, I, the stuff I like is is in general quite a, a bit simpler and a bit more <laughs> a bit more ridiculous than Route One. Um, that is not to say I dislike Lungfish. Like Lungfish are amazing, but I I, I I'm not going to kind of claim to be the the world's greatest lungfish fan. I'm, I'm, I'm not that cool. Um, but again, like as the kind of lyricist of that band that are iconic and, you know, absolute kind of underground legends, uh, you can see probably how like Dan's, I don't know how his reputation is proceeding. Um, the other, so as I said, Dan is a introverted guy and, not one who really ever sought the limelight. Um, uh, he was hailed primarily, I think, because Hardy was such a champion of his. Like in um, Stephen Gilbert's The Tattoo Source book, for example, Hardy calls him 
like one of the you know, best tattooers in the world. At the time, um, you know, uh, he says actually Dan Higgs is one of my all-time favorite tattooers, a visionary tattooer with a bold style. But I don't think Dan was ever comfortable with that kind of limelight. And, and certainly as tattooing got more popular um, towards the end of the 90s into the 2000s, I don't think he it, the life of a celebrity tattooer was something he wanted to do. And so he sort of retired from tattooing and, and has withdrawn. It's not really withdrawn, it's not really fair. He's just not, he just doesn't kind of, you know, he's not a big publicity seeking guy um, into focusing on music and poetry. Um, but there is an interview, there was an interview with, um, with, with Higgs, uh, then going by Dan Higgs in a magazine called uh, Tattoo Review, Tattoo Review issue number 25. Um, this was a book, uh, a magazine, sorry, which also, was published as Outlaw Biker Tattoo Review. And it was, yeah, it was also one of those magazines that I would pick up copies of when I go to Tower Records. Again, my memory is not good enough to know if I saw this or when I saw this the first time round. There is a scanned version of it um, up on uh, up on Sean Porter's website, Occult Vibrations. Um, like, uh, memory's a funny thing. I do have a kind of memory of seeing and and and... Yeah, like absolutely obsessing over this article, but whether that was later in life or um, or, or or something that I've you know my, where my memory's got conflated, I don't know. In any case, um, that the article is fascinating because it's one of the few times I think in in public that um, Dan talks about his history in tattooing and his theory of of, of being a tattoo artist. Um, so again, I want to read you some quotes from this because it's uh, super interesting. So Ed says, how do you get started in tattooing? And he says, I, got, I started getting tattooed right out of high school. I just got one and kept going back and got more and more. So I was in the shop at the time, this tattoo tuxes place in Baltimore. After doing this for a few years, I landed an apprenticeship with him to work there for a couple of years, learning the rudiments of it, and eventually wound up out in San Francisco doing some tattooing, and it kind of fell together. Um, he is some someone who you know, again, kind of stumbles into tattooing as a career um, and finds himself in some senses in the right place at the right time. Um, he, and, he, and, and, he, and he was obsessed with this kind of intersection between yeah, like graphic art, right? Like of the punk scene, of the kind of things you see painted on vans and published in posters, as well as the the stuff that, that was starting to kind of emerge out of that California tattooing in the late 80s, early 90s. Um, he said, uh, quote, when I came out to San Francisco, I met people that had a lot more old flash and I started seeing there was this consistency between it all. Even though different people drew it, there seemed to be some sort of laws to how it was shaded and coloured. And if you had to break down and describe what those laws were, it would be impossible. But there was a consistent look. I didn't do anything too deliberately, but I guess I liked it so much and it seemed so right to me that my work started to go that way. I didn't really push people to get traditional subject matter, even though I love all that. I just wanted to work my I wanted my work to look that way, no matter what the image was, the kind of stuff that stands in people's skin. Um and that is literally Dan's work. I mean, as I said, Ed calls it kind of bold and visionary. And I think still today, you know, people ask me today like what who's which tattooers i like and and the tattooers whose work i really rate people tattooers working today are people who have that same kind of engagement right between the past between tattooing that is connected to traditions uh of the art form of the medium that 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 learn the lessons of what works doesn't work in the skin um but they're also pushing things but in a coherent and interesting way that aren't you know cynical or um or, or nihilistic like uh, if you look at you know even just for example those photos that i was talking about in in art from the heart the tattoo time uh, of higgs's work like in there you've got uh like a black panther very kind of classic tattoo design you know dating back to the 30s but that's done in this very kind of weird grotesque style there's a like sailor's grave sinking ship um there's a uh like Hanya mask but wearing a poker visor and holding a bomb um it's just this kind of remix basically of stuff that is old and stuff that is new with a kind of unstudied instinct about why the hell it works as an image um and i mentioned uh you know i mentioned his flash um like 
there are a couple of um, really iconic sheets of his flash, which get referenced over and over and over again. Um, the 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 um, the most kind of yeah iconic of which I suppose is this kind of hooded monk kind of figure. Um, it's this like. Yeah, something that looks like it could have, could have come out of a seventies comic book, but also out of a nineteen forties flash sheet, but also out of nothing but Dan Higgs's mind because it mixes like occultism and strangeness with this absolutely incredibly uh, clean, stylistic um, uh, graphic style with yeah, with an absolute understanding of how how tattooing works right this little like bandaged hooded figure that is just for me like what sums up uh Higgs's work i mean you can also i think the other thing to actually like say about dan higgs is if you look if you look at some of the stuff that he was doing and he's still doing if you look at the art that he's drawing for the covers of his books stuff that sort of spans old school with esoteric with magic you know with that kind of kenneth anger kind of vibe you can see a lot of contemporary tattooing is also very very post higgsian right stuff with eyes all over it stuff with um kind of masonic imagery stuff that's got pyramids or sacred geometry like a lot of that is coming out of um out of higgs's oeuvre right like I don't, it's probably not right to say he invented it in a way, but he was like right in the center of when it was happening, drawing upon all of these inputs, right, um, of, of of California and um, a, a punk subculture and of tattoo history and like mixing it into this thing that is just like deeply, it's clever and it's profound and it's like, yeah, complex, but also done in a very, again, unpretentious, straightforward, fuck you, this is cool tattooing kind of way um like yeah i mean there's another you know um this is another like uh, going on in that interview because um hardy says yeah some tattooers think just by grabbing components they're going to get some power from them with no thought of how to how they're executed dice pinups or whatever um and actually higgs says yeah no um basically people are running out of ideas it goes back to that notion of athletic tattooing where you've got to beat what went before you people are afraid if they made tattoos or art that looks like there's something already happened it's not as valid which is ridiculous one person didn't invent the wheel it was invented simultaneously all over the place by people that were inspired it didn't make any successive wheel less of a wheel they all rock they all rolled I don't know. It seems to me it used to, used to be a thing that just happened to certain people. Some people got tattooed. It was almost like a random accident. Um, so this is like March 1993. Yeah, so there's no way that I would have bought this magazine at the time I was too young. But um, I, I'm certain that somewhere I picked up a copy of this or saw a copy, maybe in um, in Lao's shop or somewhere else. But like that, again, is something that, I, as I said, has become pretty foundational to me. You know, like this idea that uh, tattooing has to be progressive. It has to push things forward, but only in a way that's like aware and connected to where it's come from. And like Higgs is like the absolute fucking master of that stuff, if you ask me. Um, It's funny, as I said, because he was, he's so, um, you know, he's so kind of like uh, reserved. there's not a huge amount about him online, really. Like you have to kind of, you know, he's he's a guy that the tattoo heads know about, um, and hopefully now more people will know about him too. But you have to do a bit of work um, uh, to figure out some stuff about his tattooing. I mean, I love there's <laughs> there's a quote that I found when I was researching this um, from um, uh, a, a punk fanzine uh, called Heart Attack from 2004, which is like this sort of um, hardcore, like quite not, it was kind of like a, you know, a sort of response to maximum rock and roll, basically this kind of, um, uh, this like uh, quite slick, but you know, quite big, quite extensive, quite influential, um, uh, DIY punk scene called heart attack. And in their, in their year in review episode, 
from 2004, looking back at 2003, they've got um, the best Dan Higgs story of 2003, which tells you, like, you know, just how kind of mythologized this guy had become. Um, I'm not sure exactly what year he retired from tattooing. As I said, um, he, he starts in the you know, he, um, uh, Longfish um, uh, begins in the late 80s. He's appearing in Hardy's publications from around 1990. And you know, I think certainly by 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 two thousand or so, he's he's basically checked out of tattooing and focusing on music. Um, but he's become this kind of myth, you know, like, um, like weirdly, another Daniel Daniel Kitson, the stand up comedian, is sort of the same, right? Like, was absolutely this incredible, like, fated talent of the comedy world in the UK, and then went, no, nah, I don't, I don't want to do this to be famous i just want to do it to do it and basically withdrew from any publicity and tv and panel shows and now does you know basically like small shows to complete fanboys and fangirls rather than the stadiums that he could be filling like he has this kind of integrity thing um the fact that as i said there's this best dan higgs story of 2003 um in the heart attack year in review is just a good <laughs> indication of just how mythologized this guy was you know he, he he has a big beard and he's kind of messianic. His, as I said, his music and his lyrics, his poetry and his drawing, and his thought is very esoteric and Gnostic and weird. Um, but And the story itself is amazing, right? So this is uh, Best Stan Higgs Story of 2003. Um, while driving around the streets of Baltimore, Longfish's front man, Daniel Higgs, was spotted walking on the sidewalk. In true fanboy glory, someone from the car yelled, Hey, Dan Higgs, as they were driving by. Higgs did not look towards the car, nor at the catcaller within. Instead, he halts in his tracks and looked up to the sky, combing, combing the clouds for a sign from God. And like, that seems to me like as good a an account of Higgs um, and his sense of his own, not his sense of his own self, but like how he engages with the world is almost like the rest of the world is is just kind of noise for him <laughs> in some senses. Um, but also just how kind of mythologized and fated he he even was back in 2003 and, and only has become more in the years since. Um, he's done a lot of music um, since 2003, so you can find more interviews with him. Um, there was an interview, for example, with The Quietus, uh, which you can find online uh, back in 2019. Um, when he was performing at a, a, a festival and he talks a lot in there about his musical history and about how he kind of relates to um, his own back catalogue and to the, the music that he grew up with. Um, but yeah, he's this figure that I think, you know, as I, I've talked about this before a lot, again, a lot of the tattooers that I love, um, both contemporary and from history are tattooers who had the good grace to talk a lot to newspapers <laughs> and Ed's there, of course, and, um, Sailor Jerry and um, Lal Hardy and Alex Binney and Sutherland MacDonald and George Burchett and Samuel O'Reilly and Martin Hildebrandt and all these guys and gals to some degree who would uh, who'd have the good grace to speak to um, to speak to uh, 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 to newspapers and to you know, get stuff that was recorded. Higgs is like the opposite to that, and I guess I I was very fortunate to kind of stumble across him at the time when my mind was like absolutely open to to buy what the what the fuck he was selling at least visually um another kind of insight into that same you know again like if you want to try and sum up um higgs this is quite a good sign this is also from an inter- this is also from an interview with ed this time done with um with vale who was the editor of um modern primitives uh, in which ed features who also published a book a little book back in 2000 uh, and 13 called Interviews by V. Vale with Ed Hardy, um, which is very good. And uh, that has an interview in it from an interview that Vale conducted with Ed actually around um, about uh, 2013, actually, funnily enough, when the book came out. And um, in that, Ed says, I think tattooing is hard to gra- for people to grasp People would get interested in it because they would see it as this interesting, quote, primitive action. When I started, people in the high art world started stiffing around and I became involved in some gallery shows of artwork that weren't necessarily just tattoo flash. Maybe it was work by tattooers who worked in other mediums. They were all completely conscious of themselves as artists. And we were going to have this group show in Chicago, Dan Higgs, myself, 
Manuel Acampo, and a couple of other sh- other people. Dan said we should call our show, and apologies for the um, slur here, Retarded Hillbillies, because this was right at the beginning of the 90s when outsider art began getting a lot of buzz. Now, of course, we know it goes all the way back to Dubuffet's prescient involvement on this awareness of how important and powerful all that art is, the art of institutionalised people, the so-called insane. Of course, the gallery owner didn't think it was funny at all and would never let us use that title. It's like they think, oh, here are some interesting primitives. Some people get thrown off when they see that. What do you mean? You have a fine art degree and know more about historical art than anyone else. They don't like that. There's this snobbery in the art world where they'd even be for it because they liked it was the fact it was somehow innocent and see primitive or they were against it because they thought that was all it was. But no one understands the f- nuances of the whole tattoo phenomenon. Again, I think like that suggestion from Dan to call the show that at that time, and with Ed's reflection of like how that absolutely busts up the pretension of the art world's attempted um, swallowing up and 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 um, you know cynical kind of appropriation of tattooing is just again a perfect. Um, indication all the stuff that's just again as i said all there in higgs's um flash and 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 in his tattooing um there are um some tattooers today who are uh enormous uh, higgs fans um who do very higgs inspired work um i think uh as i said a huge amount of uh contemporary tattooing is basically Post Higgs, we all live in the world that Dan Higgs made. I think, um, at least I'm going to argue that. Um, I'd love to. I think at some point I am going to um, uh, find um, someone to either tattoo the, the the hooded mummy figure on me or the hooded monk. Those those two little you know sigils, um, which are so iconic of Higgs's work. I think I, I I would love to get one or or both of them tattooed on me. Um, I haven't yet. I have to say, I haven't yet. Um, his like post tattoo work on paper, um, is also just amazing. This kind of what I guess Juxtapose magazine would call like pop surrealism. Um, again, g- Google image search like. Dan Higgs flash or Daniel Higgs art or just type Daniel Higgs and do an image search and you'll see the kind of thing that he's doing. It's this like, I mean, it's funny um, that even in those early, you know, that early presentation of of what he was calling kind of weirdo um, new school or weirdo new tattooing, Hardy was identifying these references to people like Bosch. I don't think that was obviously in Higgs's tattoo work at the time, um, but clearly Hardy saw something in that that was, was inspiring. Uh, and yeah, like, if you haven't heard uh, Higgs's work before, or, or, or of Higgs, haven't encountered him, I'm I really encourage you um, to do so. As I said, it, it's funny because when I'm talking about other tattooers, um, there's lots of biography to share and lots of anecdote. And with Higgs, like the images and the legacies, I think sort of stand. You know, more or less on their own. Um, I don't want to. I don't want to drag this episode out like longer than it needs to be. Um, I've been recording for about 35, 35 minutes, and I I feel like I don't want to. I don't want to kind of overwork this. I don't want to kind of you know really pull any more of the of the threads in too much detail. But um, perhaps I'll tell you what we'll do. Maybe like to finish this up, I want to go through this uh, this particular flashy that I'm, well, which is you know, came out of the collection of of his flash. Um, and talk about the images that are on it. You can find it on, um, there's a scan of it on Pinterest, even actually, funnily enough. Um, originals of it are like hen's teeth, basically. But I think if we can go through the images on this sheet, um, and I'll just talk about them individually, um, and try and do some what we call an ice tree ekphrasis, try and describe these little uh, designs. Um, Try and uh, try and you know turn these in completely inappropriate and always inherently flawed way. Turn the graphic into the into words, because um, again, I think it's a good kind of yeah, it's a good summary of Higgs's like visual um for not visual philosophy, right? This sheet. So it's part of a set. Um, in the set 
or at the heart of the set, I suppose is perhaps the right way to say it, um, sits this incredible composition of, again, a real kind of traditional old school type design. It's a cross with a garland, with a skull and crossbones and a banner. But it's so kind of strangely composed, like almost something out of a Masonic um, sketchbook. Loads of obvious influences from um, from Hardy and from from Bob Shaw, uh, you know, from from the, that 1940s stuff. With this absolutely kind of instinctive engagement with color and shading, the banner at the bottom has this just incredibly um, iconic now shading on it. Um, and it would you know, just be an incredible piece for someone's like um, uh, upper arm or even uh, upper back. Top of the sheet is a sun and a moon. The sun itself has actually become pretty iconic. Lots of people have redrawn that. This kind of grinning sun looks like, again, something out off of an old tarot deck, but with a real 90s flare, bright acid yellow with a kind of grinning gapped toothed smile. Uh, and then this um, maniacal crescent moon against the, um, the the black starred sky behind it. Um, ironically, uh, of course, and this is a mistake, lots of people who draw moons make, you, you don't see stars behind a crescent moon because it's the sphere of the moon blocking it. But loads of people do that. <laughs> loads of artists, when they draw crescent moons, draw stars behind them, so we can forgive Higgs for that. Um, again, absolutely iconic. Um, great knee pieces, perhaps. Then there are these two pieces I alluded to earlier. In fact, I think probably in my excitement, I think I might have even in my mind talked about, or in this earlier thing, talked about them as the same thing, but they're not. They're, they're similarly composed and sort of work in my head as a pair. This mummy, this bandaged mummy, which is this, this sort of teardrop shaped um, sarcophagus bound mummy that is just one of those incredible, most incredible tattoo designs because it's just a few lines, right? All the best um, traditional tattoos in my mind turn complex Im- or, or achieve complex emotion just from a simple set of lines. And this is like a handful of lines of this little wrapped up mummy, um, but tells this incredible story that's evocative of everything from, you know, ancient Egyptian esoteric uh, religion to horror comics to, um, ha- you know, uh, universal monsters, all of that, but all just with this sort of teardrop. Uh, plus head shaped bound bandage wrapped mummy. On the right is this monk again, um, very similar in shape uh, or in kind of composition to the the mummy. Um, again, this 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 figure who bestrides bestrides the uh, the world sort of transcends Higgs. I think um, I don't know the source of it. Maybe it came from um, uh, initially came from a from a from a third party source. But it's this yeah robed hooded faceless monk. Um, and then underneath those on the left, um, a crossed anchor and on the right, a dagger. All of these just absolutely staple designs of American traditional tattooing, but with this sort of strange, esoteric, um, uncanny edge to them that many, 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 many people, I think, have tried to imitate, but but none have ever quite um, matched like to the same degree. I can't really you know, describe enough how influential Higgs's work was. I mean, even the color palette he's using, right? Like taking stuff, that very traditional Cap Coleman kind of black, green, yellow, red um, color palette and adding to it little bits of purple, little bits of um, you know, burnt orange, little bits of kind of violets and stuff that doesn't, shouldn't, work but does like pushes this vernacular language pushes this absolute kind of heart of tattooing um to uh yeah to 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 to, to new places and in fact you know um i think there's this sense that um as well like higgs doesn't you know maybe like maybe maybe it's strange for me even to be talking about this and i i said i hope i've just sort of talked about Higgs in a way that it's also through my own journey. He's not a guy that really wants to be um, a superstar of tattoo history. He's apparently quite um, reticent to have his old tattoo designs online, um, which is why you 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 can't find very many, as I said. Um, But yeah, like I I think 
Higgs is this absolutely seminal figure for me. Um, and I, I hope that, yeah, I just want to tell anyone that hasn't heard of him just how fucking cool he is um, and how, without knowing really anything about him, when I first saw those images, um, I feel very, very privileged to have, to have, as I said, been around at the time um, when it was a, a good time to get into him. And, and, and I think without me and, and you know, even just going through this today and like, you know, thinking about what I was going to say on this podcast, meditating on what Higgs did and what he taught me, I, he's more even embedded in my own instincts about what tattooing is and should be and could possibly be and what art is and could be. Um, then perhaps I even realized uh, myself, I can see why Ed loved him. Um, I can see why Ed really, really thought he was, uh, you know, uh, one of the best tattooers of all time. Um, a guy that is humble, if that's even the right word, that is strange in the best possible sense of that word. Um, yeah, that is like this absolutely kind of just wellspring of so much of what came afterwards. And I think what, what a lot of contemporary tattooers in the last few years have sort of returned to, even if they didn't necessarily know um, much about where it had come from. So um, I'll sum this up and finish this by citing um, Sean Porter again, who, as I said, um, who will get on the show soon, um, who who posted uh, on his Cult Vibrations blog the um, uh, snapshot of that Higgs interview. And he said uh, in another blog post on that um on that on that website of his, he said, quote, it's not important to me if this story is true or not, if these just happened the way they were told to me, or if it even happened at all. A friend of mine was guesting at Tattoo City back in the halcyon days of Ed, Eddie, Freddie, and Dan. And in between tattoos, a few guys came in for an appointment. He overheard them talking about a crazy hobo in the park yelling poems to the pigeons and making fun of his big bushy beard and his peculiar way of wearing layered oversized sports coats. When my buddy asked who they were there to see, they replied enthusiastically, Daniel Higgs. <laughs> Higgs had many superlatives thrown his way over the course of his 30-year career as an artist, oracular, shamanistic, enigmatic, and most importantly, influential. This is Sean again still. The ripples, the vibrations of his influence extend well past his brief stint as a tattooer. And even today, some 15 years after the publication of his um, all text, The Book of Antennae, his resonance is still well justified. Well, he's probably more celebrated for his graphic art, his poetry and songwriting and go hand in hand with his visual output. The Book of Antennae contains a self-described alphabet sequence as composed by Daniel Nomo Sinks Higgs. Um, and uh, whilst unlike the Doomsday Bonnet, which is more graphic, features no artwork other than the cover, still deserves a place on any fan's bookshelf. It's on my bookshelf. I can't find it. <laughs> um, so that's, I think, as good a way to sum up as any. Um, if you want, um, you know, not just to take my word for uh, the importance and legacy and, and, and um, as Sean says, resonances of Daniel Higgs through time. Um, and yeah, thank you for listening. Um, been a weird one today. It was sort of very stream of consciousness. I, uh, as I said, um, Tom uh, was away and I, I, I could have read a chapter from the book and things. I didn't want to do that. I wanted to just speak quite genuinely from the heart about uh, this artist who um, who I find super, super um, fascinating and important and influential. Um, yeah. Go check out Dan Higgs. Um, and uh, we'll see you in the next episode. Thank you and bye-bye.